What is this eye that is always there? To know what the self really is, we need to carefully observe our own consciousness. And this is the path that many spiritual seekers have explored. They've looked deep within their own minds, trying to find the essence of self. And they all come up with the same answer. There's nothing there. No thing we can call the self. This sense of a unique, separate, individual self turns out to be an illusion, albeit a very convincing illusion. This feeling we call I is just a feeling of being conscious. Many experience it as simply a sense of being. But because we don't normally recognize that what we are is this inner quality of being, we keep looking for some thing we can call the self. And so we dress ourselves up in all these psychological clothes, things like the roles we play in life the way people see us, the things we do, our personality, our character. But these are all images of the self. They're not the self in its true essence. It's almost like the opposite to the emperor having no clothes. In this case, there's lots of clothes, but no emperor underneath. If we imagine ourselves to be the various ideas we have of the self, then our sense of identity is always at the mercy of events in the world. If our circumstances change, if our roles change, if the way people see us changes, then our very sense of identity can be threatened. And as a result of this, we spend a lot of time and energy trying to fend off threats to our identity, trying to bolster our self-image, buying things we don't really need, trying to be someone. On the other hand, when we discover what we really are, when we discover this sense of being that's always there underneath, there comes a sense of liberation. There's the realization that we don't need to do anything in order to be anybody. And with that, the mind relaxes. There's a sense of deep relief. Underlying everything we do in life, everything we're looking for, everything we're chasing, there's one common desire, one universal purpose, and that is we want to feel better. We want to feel more satisfied, more fulfilled, more at ease. None of us wants to be in pain or suffering. We want to avoid that if we can. We all want to feel happier, have more joy in life. What this ultimately means is that what we're really looking for is not things so much as a better state of mind, a more satisfying state of consciousness. This is the mind's bottom line. As the Dalai Lama put it, in the final analysis, the hope of every person is simply peace of mind. There's nothing wrong with this. It's completely natural. Where we go wrong is in the ways we go about finding peace of mind. Welcome to Beverly Hills. You have arrived. So we chase after wealth, possession, fashion and fame, in the hope that if we just got enough, we'd finally be happy. Now sometimes we do find what we're looking for, and we do feel happy again. But it's not a happiness which lasts. So we start looking for something else to make us feel better. Many of us spend our whole lives just looking. Yet the truth is, it isn't having the right things or experiences that makes us happy. When we examine our minds closely, we find the very opposite. When we think there's something missing, something we need in order to be happy, we create for ourselves a feeling of discontent. This I often think is the sad joke about human beings. We're so busy worrying about whether or not we're gonna be at peace in the future, we never allow ourselves to be at peace in the present moment.
How can we be more in the present? In itself, it's quite simple. It's just a matter of relaxing the attention and opening our awareness to what we're actually experiencing. Just noticing the actual sensations in your body, flowing of the breath, feeling in the hands, just noticing what is, as it is, without thinking about it. Our experience of the body is always in the present moment. It's our thinking about it that takes us out of the present. The mind's been so deeply ingrained to think about what's going on that very easily it jumps in and off again on some train of thought. When you realize that has happened, just simply relax the attention again and once more become aware of what is actually happening in the present moment. The practice itself is simple, like any other practice. It's just a matter of repeating the process again and again. Gradually it gets easier and easier. The world's spiritual traditions appear on the surface to be very different. They have different views on the origin of life, or our place in the universe, or what happens to us when we die. Some believe in a supreme being. Some believe in many deities. Others don't talk of God at all. But they do have some common underlying themes. They all see that we get caught in attitudes and beliefs that don't serve us well, that lead us to behave in ways that are harmful to others and often not even in our own best interest. Each spiritual tradition seeks in its own way, some through prayer, meditation or devotion, to open to the inner world of the mind, the world of the spirit. They want to liberate our souls, to free our minds from self-centered attitudes and materialist attachments. They are urging us to discover who and what we really are. In one way or another, they are talking about a shift in consciousness. Consider what happens when we find ourselves stuck in a traffic jam. A traffic jam only has the power to stop the traffic. It does not inject adrenaline into your bloodstream. If you're feeling upset, it's because the voice in your head is telling you that you're going to be late, and if you're late, bad things may happen, you may miss the meeting, you may be late home. It's this that's making you upset the fear that you will not be happy sometime in the future. Western science has been remarkably successful at explaining the world around us, but it hasn't given us meaning. The world it describes is a dry, material world without any real purpose. And science has also given us an abundance of technologies which we've used to satisfy many of our needs and desires. But again, it hasn't given us values. It doesn't tell us the best way to use this incredible knowledge and power. It also hasn't really helped us develop inwardly. If anything, it's reinforced our sense of self-centeredness. We're probably more full of ourselves today than we've ever been. I think what we need today is an integration of our scientific understanding of the world with the wisdom that's held in the world's spiritual traditions. The origins of consciousness may remain a mystery, but how to awaken our consciousness how to free ourselves from misguided attitudes and values, to discover who and what we really are, that is not a mystery. That's something that's been explored by spiritual teachers from around the world, people who've gone deep within their own minds and discovered the true nature of consciousness, and from that, how to live with joy and love in their hearts. And that's what we need today. We need to rediscover that wisdom for ourselves.